June 18th, 2010 had already started out pretty miserably for Corporal Clifford Wooldridge of the 3rd Battalion, 7th Marines. Just five minutes after leaving the secure coalition-held perimeter of his base, his Humvee was blown out from under him by a Taliban IED. Thankfully, the armored vehicle had done its job and kept him and his squad alive and well within it. So the squad reloaded into another Humvee, which, of course, just mere minutes later was hit by another IED. The Marine convoy was driving through a Taliban-infested valley where enemy ambushes were incredibly common, but I don't think any of the Marines expected their day to start off this poorly. Corporal Clifford Wooldridge was a part of the Marine occupation of Musa Kala, located in the middle of Helmand Province, Afghanistan. Musa Kala was prime poppy growing country, and since the Taliban made most of their coin off of illegal heroin and opium sales, they weren't exactly excited about the idea of a bunch of American and Afghan soldiers rolling in there and setting fire to their favorite cash crop. The Marines had been sent to talk with the townspeople in the valley, assess the situation, and try to persuade the local leadership to ally with the Afghan government and stop providing aid to the Taliban. When the Marine convoy finally reached the valley, they found every townsperson had fled their homes in fear of the insanity that was about to go down, which turned out to be a very wise move. The 125-man detachment of Marines rolled up on 250 well-trained, well-equipped, battle-hardened Taliban fighters entrenched in heavily fortified, ambush-ready mountain bunkers. The Taliban fighters opened fire from positions in the mountains to the front and the abandoned village to the side hammering the marine convoy with rocket-propelled grenades and automatic weapons, while the Humvee turret gunners returned the favor with heavy fire from their 50 caliber machine guns. While the gunners laid down fire, Wooldridge bailed out of his vehicle, grabbed his M249 saw, and told his fire team to hang tight. But this wasn't his first time being ambushed by the Taliban, and Wooldridge remembered from his past firefights that the Taliban would always fire all their RPG ammo and then just fade back to hide in the mountains. So he decided to charge across an open field, firing his machine gun at the enemy in an effort to flank them and cut off their escape route into the mountains. He managed to take out two Taliban fighters with his machine gun while he was in a dead sprint across the open field. And once he reached the other side, he dropped to the ground and laid down suppressing fire so the rest of his fire team could race across the field to join him. With his four-man squad now assembled in a position behind the flank of the enemy, Wooldridge spotted a team of at least 15 enemy troops armed with heavy weapons and RPGs hiding in the abandoned village, preparing to ambush the Marine Humvees. Not about to let that happen, Wooldridge rallied his team and led them on a daring charge straight across open ground once again, firing his machine gun straight into the crowd of unsuspecting Taliban. His attack shredded the enemy weapons team, killing eight of the enemy, including the RPG operator, and sending the rest of them scattering into the village. But as the four-man squad prepared to secure the area, the Marine Corporal stopped them cold in their tracks. He heard something, voices, and they were very close. Wooldridge was certain they were hostiles, Taliban prepping a counterattack, and that the voices were coming from behind a nearby wall. So he told his men to hold tight, and he grabbed hold of his M249 and quickly maneuvered his way around the wall coming face to face with four heavily equipped Taliban fighters carrying AK-47s, RPGs, and a Soviet-built PKM 762 caliber machine gun. And they were all standing within 10 feet of him. Wooldridge immediately unloaded his M249 into the enemy, killing the first three Taliban fighters within a split second. But when he swung the muzzle of his M249 over towards the fourth Taliban fighter, his weapon ran completely out of ammo. To make things worse, this fourth Taliban fighter was the one carrying the PKM heavy machine gun. 
Wooldridge quickly dove back behind the wall, taking cover as the Taliban fighter began to unload his PKM machine gun. Now, for those of you who have any experience with the M249 know, it is not exactly a quick reload. But Wooldridge immediately went to work trying to reload his machine gun as quickly as he possibly could. But before he could hardly even begin the process of reloading this weapon, he saw the barrel of the PKM slowly peeking around the side of the wall. So he quickly dropped his gun to the floor and grabbed the barrel of the Taliban fighter's machine gun. He then slammed the Taliban fighter up against the wall. Before long, both men hit the ground, still holding the gun. It's unclear how big this Taliban fighter was, but Clifford Wooldridge was a large high school football playing diesel mechanic. Not the type of guy you want to get in a fist fight with. It wasn't long before Wooldridge was kicking the absolute crap out of this Taliban fighter. Knowing he was not going to last long hand to hand up against this beast of a marine, the Taliban fighter took one hand off his machine gun and reached up to pull the pin off of one of the hand grenades strapped to the outside of Wooldridge's tactical vest. And that was just the opening Wooldridge needed. He ripped the PKM out of the Taliban fighter's hands and then proceeded to beat him to death with his own machine gun. By the time the rest of the marines from his squad rounded the corner, Wooldridge was standing there amidst a pile of dead enemy soldiers. The enemy ambush had been stopped and the coast was clear. During the battle, Corporal Clifford Wooldridge had personally taken out 13 enemy troops, flanked their position, and perhaps more importantly broke their fighting spirit. Afghan interpreters would later relay to American commanders in the region that the story of Wooldridge's hand-to-hand -hand action effectively crushed the morale of the region's defenders. For his actions in the battle, Clifford Wooldridge would receive the Navy Cross, the second highest award for valor available to Marines, and was selected the USO Marine of the Year for 2012. Corporal Clifford Wooldridge, it has been an honor to share your incredible, heroic story on this channel today. Thank you so much for your service, and my god, I am glad you are on our side. Before I end this video, guys, I have one more incredible story to share with you. November 21st, 2010, in Helmand Province, Afghanistan, in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. Lance Corporal Carpenter was a member of a platoon-sized coalition force comprised of two reinforced Marine rifle squads partnered with an Afghan National Army squad. The platoon had established Patrol Base Dakota two days earlier in a small village in the Marja district in order to disrupt enemy activity and provide security for the local Afghan population. Lance Corporal Carpenter and a fellow Marine were manning a rooftop security position on the perimeter of Patrol Base Dakota when the enemy initiated a daylight attack with hand grenades, one of which landed inside their sandbagged position on the roof. Without any hesitation and with complete disregard for his own safety, Lance Corporal Carpenter moved toward the grenade in an attempt to shield his fellow Marine from the deadly blast. When the grenade detonated, his body absorbed the brunt of the blast, severely wounding him, but saving the life of his fellow Marine. Lance Corporal Carpenter was awarded the Medal of Honor. I think what's so incredible about these stories of men jumping on hand grenades for their brothers is that they don't have time to think about it. I think whenever people think about these types of stories, they put themselves in those positions and think, would I do that? What would I do? And, and when you do that, you have time to weigh out like, okay, does the person next to me have kids? Do I have kids? Do I, is, is their life maybe not as valuable as mine? Are they older than I am? Am I younger? You know, what? it depends on the situation here. But in the real life situation like this, you have no time to think. What Lance Corporal Carpenter did was not 
a result of him weighing the pros and cons of his choices. It was his gut reaction. That was what's deep within his heart and soul. It's who he is. He didn't weigh out whether he loved his brother enough to make that sacrifice or whether his brother's life was worth more than his life. He just jumped on that grenade without even thinking about it. There's no time to think about it. It's a split second. It's not a decision at all. It is your body, your heart and mind's natural response. He saw the grenade and he freaking jumped on it. No time to think about it. It was his gut reaction. That level of bravery and sacrifice and love for his brothers is is who he is. In those moments, there's no time for a decision. What comes out is is your truest self. And Lance Corporal Carpenter's truest self in that moment was revealed, and it is selflessness and bravery. Lance Corporal Carpenter, it is an honor to share your story here today. Thank you so much for your service and your sacrifice for our country. And with that, guys, that's going to be the end of today's video. Thank you so much for checking it out. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. But I'll talk to you guys in the next video.